Sounds like a song, doesn't it? The Prime Minister is on the road again. Qantas is reeling in the wake of the early departure of Alan Joyce. And how is the government going to get out of what is a mess with Qatar to break down a huge week of news? From Bondi Partners, joining me at the desk, Peter McGoran. Pete, how are you? Good morning, Tim. Excellent. India, vital to everything in this country, that country. And um, he's there at the moment, of course, our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. And that's a very good thing. Uh, it strengthens the relationship with India. It's not a bilateral visit. It's, it's the G20 meeting. Uh, but from there, it's a stepping stone to his much-anticipated visit to Beijing, the first Prime Minister in seven years. Uh, that will help settle the waters. But the underlying issues with China are not going to go away, and probably may not in, uh, for a generation, in which they have expansionist plans mm. to influence our region. But at least we have if you like, an engagement. I wouldn't say it's cordial, it's certainly not trusted, but at least it's an improvement to the uh, antagonism and the separation of the last few years. Oh, yeah, it's vastly improved, isn't it? And uh, they've been on, a, on a, 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 like a, a metaphoric war footing, the Australian government, this current government. Penny Wong's come out and said that Australia needs to be stronger both economically, diplomatically, uh, politically in this area, in this area of, uh, of Asia. Correct. And we should be proud of the efforts of previous governments who stood firm, didn't compromise, put the national interest first, and started developing the necessary defence capabilities and the like, for which the Albanese government has built upon. So, it, if you like, it's a bipartisan approach to China. Yeah, they did niggle a bit, though, Dutton and uh, Morrison. But we, we, we don't need to go there. But... They did, the, they did uh, provoke the tiger mm. or poke the bear, mm. whichever analogy you want to. But nonetheless, they, they, they set the footing and Penny Wong and Albanese and the government did not waver from it. So when Albanese goes to China, it's not cap in hand. It is... It is uncompromised representation of Australia's interests. Oh, the trickery of, of the relationship between Australia and China is on show by, in a way, the President isn't there. The President of China's not in India. Yeah, which I'm puzzled. As you know, there's mm. enormous tensions on borders between India and China, but there has been a reconciliation of a kind between uh, India and China, but India no longer feels subjugated to China. It's mm. growing. It is the new China, if you like. Yeah. Alan Joyce, Qantas, he left early. It's probably no great surprise. Uh, he sails off or flies off into the sunset with an enormous amount of money. Uh, his legacy has tarnished or has been tarnished forever. Uh, what did you make of, uh, you know, chapter 16 of uh, the Qantas drama? It, that there's a few more chapters to come, yeah. Tim. Look, the, the, the big issue is how does Qantas move on? Um, unless they resolve the issue of Alan Joyce's 24 million. They can't let him go with 24 million, Tim. And it's ridiculous. Figure. It's ridiculous. It is. It's embarrassing for people who are, who are <laughs> struggling to pay rent and their mortgages. It's ridiculous. Correct. And, and under his own KPIs, mm. which determine his bonus, he can't have succeeded. The ACCC has a $250 million claim against the uh, against Qantas. The ACCC says it's, it's the most complained about... Com company in Australia. It's beset with uh, loss of uh, commercial mm. uh, travellers and the like. They can't move on until that bonus is addressed. The chairman's role, and if the, uh, frankly, if the chairman does it and board doesn't step in on the bonus, then there'll be, the, 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 there'll be ramifications for the, for. Well, them. people are saying he's got to go, don't they, the chairman? They're summer. saying he's got to go, but he is skilled uh, in these sorts of situations, so maybe he's got to do another year or two. Mm. Uh, but um, the cry for him to go will be irresistible if Alan Joyce walks out on a performance basis yeah. with $24 million. So uh, I have a great deal of sympathy for the incoming CEO, Vanessa Hudson, because no one seems to be help clearing the barnacles to allow her to reset the uh, business. Yeah, and look, most people, you and I are on planes all the time, we've flown Qantas, most Australians want it to be a great product. They're proud of this airline. Well, and they want to be proud. They, they want it to be good again. They want it to be, the you know, the poster, bo poster yeah, boy. Of agreed, aviation. Tim, but I think that's gone. I, I don't think you'll be seeing the mm. uh, Qantas choir singing on beaches or mountaintops too soon in the future. I think they'll be... I think their, their promotions and marketing will be much more tailored to the... Uh, 
the price advantage, their mm. competitiveness, their level of service, they're the issues they've got to address now. I think the days of Qantas having an emotional hold over us are gone. That upsets me a bit because I do love Peter Allen and still call Australia home. Um, <laughs> what, what, what about Qatar? This is a mess. Either the policy goes or the minister goes, you, you, you can't solve this, the government. Mm. Um, it's clearly a protectionist decision made to, uh, to support Qantas. And in the past... All governments did it, Tim, uh, because airline slight, slots are very, very valuable and tightly controlled by mm. governments all over the world. Qatar is subsidised by the uh, Qatar government. We don't... Qantas doesn't fly to Doha. I know the arguments Qantas would have made to the government uh, and to the Minister for Transport. Problem is, she makes a decision on July 10 and... and uh, doesn't adequately explain why she uh, prevented Qatar coming in, which at this time would lower fares mm. and would increase capacity. And you can see everyone's running away from it. Prime Minister says he didn't know she made the decision, uh, Catherine King. Uh, Treasurer says he didn't know. Assistant Treasurer says he didn't know. Minister for Transport says he didn't know. So she didn't consult widely. But the problem for the government is the Prime Minister's office would have known because... And the system is that an advisor to the Prime Minister is given three or four ministers yeah. to look after. That person knew. Now, did that advisor elevate it higher to the Chief of Staff, possibly in a memo buried in Anthony Albanese's mm. briefcase? We don't know. But the point is, this is not going away. It's a bad decision. It's the wrong decision at the moment. And you either come out and say it was a mistake and uh, Qatar will have a limited access to Sydney and Melbourne, or the minister won't survive. John Farnham's song, The Voice, uh, the problem with the song, it's a great song, elevated his career again um, and it changed his life, but you're the voice, try and understand yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, what do you think? Yeah, it, the irony is that, unfortunately, the selecting... John Farnham's voice has allowed more ridicule of the of the situation argument. All you can say is that a week's gone by, there's only five to go, and there's still no improvement in the yes vote. It, it's headed for defeat. It's going to be hard, isn't it? Um, it's going to be hard to, to, to see it get up. And I, I think, I suppose they always say timing is never right, but 11 interest rate rises, cost of living, it's just... It's hard for people to want to understand when they're struggling. Correct. And people are struggling, Tim. The economic da data is unmistakable. The interest rate of 4.1, thankfully, it's, it's been mm. held for three consecutive months. But the point is people have borrowed a great deal more uh, because housing is so expensive. So, and renters are struggling. And we've got low unemployment. Uh, inflation is stabilised. Uh, so that's all good. But the underlying issues of growth in Australia, mm. we've got a terrible growth rate, Tim. It's 0.4% yeah. uh, in, in, in the June quarter, 0.4% in the uh, March quarter, which means we're not growing as a, as a government, mm. the, uh, as a country. The government's not looking at productivity yeah. issues. The unions are getting everything they want. So there's a two-paced two, two economy. Some people are doing well. Uh, others are not, those in retail, some mm. in hospitality, and certainly uh, home borrowers and renters are the, are the worst off. And you can't have a crack at these people that went and took money out because they were told by the RBA there would be no interest rate rises for a long period of time and they've been smacked in the head by it. Look, we've been smacked in the head by time. We've only got a certain amount of time. It's been great. And we'll Thanks do it again next week. Indeed. All right, beautiful.